Hi everybody, it is April and I'm in my craft room and today we are going to make a quilt as you go quilt for those muggles who watch spectator sports in the winter. I am going to be making a quilt as you go quilanket for when you go outside and are participating in winter activities in which you might want to carry something warm. Now I found this on the ThermaWeb blog, so I will share that post with you in the description below. And before I forget, if you would like to help my channel and you enjoy these videos, please click the subscribe button. Now back to our regularly scheduled program. Let me show you the fabrics that I'm going to use and then I will get in to what this blank quilanket, quilanket looks like. The majority of this fabric came from Joann's and there's a name for it. It's Harry Potter fabric and Param Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers owns the fabric licensed it's licensed fabric so let me show you what I found I am going to cut a six and a half inch strip of each of those Harry Potter fabrics my piece of black fleece and I've cut a piece that's a yard and a half wide by width of fabric. So here are the strips that I've cut to go on my fleece to be my quilt as you go. Now you can do this on your cutting table or on the floor wherever it is that you want. I'm just going to do it right here as I get ready to sew. The first thing that I need to do is I need to attach my first strip. Now I know that this is the selvage edge and my selvage edge is straight. So I'm going to take my first strip. I'm going to start a little ways down from the top and the beauty of fleece is that cotton likes to stick to it. If you want to use a measuring device, you can do that. I'm going to do it just with my eyes. I'm just going to sew a quarter inch seam to attach this first strip to my fleece. I'm going to use the edge of this strip as my guide and sew all the way down. Also keep in mind when choosing your fabric, your flannel, fleece, fleece, <laughs> you can do this with flannel too. Keep in mind that black shows everything, everything. All right, so I have attached the first row. This is quilt as you go. And I still want to stay with a quarter inch seam. And in order to be able to line it up on my machine using my foot, I have to turn this around and roll up the end because I need to sew on this side. Here I'm going to match the end. So this is going to be my next row. So I'm going to line it up with the edge of the piece that I just sewed down. I'm going to line up the ends and then I'm going to line up all along the edge of that row that I just put down and sew it. Just sew to the end of the piece of fabric that you're working with. 
we will take care of this excess fabric at the end of the project. Now you've got row number two. So your bulk under your machine in the throat space will get smaller and smaller. So I'm going to flatten this out. Again, I'm on fleece, so the cotton sticks to the fleece. If you want to use pins, by all means, if that makes you more comfortable, please do that. My next row will be the red again. So I am going to do the same exact thing I did with the red and the print. I'm going to put the red on the print, line it up on the edge, and sew it down. So you have a seam, and on the black it's hard. I didn't really think this through. <laughs> but you are quilting the front and the back as you go. And then when you get to the bottom, the last row that I want to do is a red. So once I attach it to the row ahead of it, then I will sew that down as well. Once you have all of your rows on your fleece, then we will go back to the cutting table and I will show you what to do next. Just a word to you overachievers out there. When you're sewing your strips, of course you're going to start the one end where they're even. So you've got one side, this side, that's even and it's gonna be easy to add the border strip. The other side will probably not be as even unless you've pre-cut your strips, which I did not because, you know, that takes the fast out of it. However, I tried to be an overachiever and I would oftentimes sew past the previous strip. So it just so happens that my red strip was always longer than any of my print strips. So I had to pick out the excess because I need to cut these closer to being even so that I can add my border strip. This is the side that has the uneven strips. So I'm going to lay my blanket, quillanket, another quillanket. I'm liking the quillankets. I want to make sure that this side is nice and straight. And I'm not ready to cut my fleece yet. And the first thing I need to do is find out which of my strips is the shortest. It's this one. So what I did is I picked out the stitches here that were too long. And I just would fold it back. I didn't do a secure stitch at the end of this row. So that enables me to easily pull back my fabric and then I'll just go along and carefully rip out my stitches. Instead of cutting it on this side, we will flip it. So now that we're on the underside, I can make sure that when I trim these little pieces, I'm not accidentally trimming my fleece as well. Ah, uh, there's Maxine. All right, so let's flip this over. It's much straighter now. First, I need to join two pieces of this fabric in order to make it long enough for my border. So here I have my border sewn. I'm going to line it up with my piece that has the shortest with the fabric. Put a clip in it. Now let's see, can I clip these others? Yeah. So I'll just put a clip so that I know where to sew. So now it's just like sewing a border on any other project. On the end, there is a seam on the outside and the fleece is going to cover up that seam. So I didn't want to sew past. Now we still have one more step. We need to sew our border down. And again, I don't want to go past my bottom border. 
or top border or whichever border this one is. And there is your border. We are on the home stretch. Now we have to trim around the edge of our quill blanket and fold over our fleece, which is going to be our binding and our backing, and then sew it and we're done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the side that has the least fleece available to determine exactly how far away from the edge I want to cut. So let's try an inch and see how that goes. So if I do an inch, yep, that gets rid of my selvage and gives me enough fleece to fold over and sew. In order to have those corners fold over on each side and not have bulk right here in the corner, I'm going to cut this corner off. Line this 45 degree angle on one edge of the inside fabric. Now, I've got it lined on the edge of the inside fabric and here is the point. I want to push it a little bit away from the point just to make sure I don't have any issues with not being able to cover all of the fabric on the inside of the fleece. So I'm just pushing it out mm, maybe a quarter of an inch. Then I've got this angle and what I'm going to do is fold over each side and it forms a point. So what I'll do is I will put a clip on it and I will use a zigzag stitch in the corner to attach and close these two pieces of fabric together on the inside fabric. I have all of my edges clipped and I have chosen a zigzag stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the corner where I've put my two pieces or two sides together. So I've done my zigzag stitch and I'm going to use that same zigzag stitch all along the edge. My quill anchor is done, and I am terribly late for our Quidditch match, but this thing is going to keep me so toasty warm while we're watching the game. I will take some pictures of it and show it to you so you can see the final product, but I love the way it turned out. As you can see on the back, it's already quilted. No need to quilt, and it is just the right size for a child or a lap quilt or what I'm going to use it for, which is to keep warm during those frosty Quidditch matches. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Eat some chocolate and be kind to everyone. Until next time, bye. Today's chocolate of choice is an underappreciated candy bar. It is a Butterfinger. Now, I believe that they have improved the Butterfinger in the past, I don't know, two or three years because it used to be a Butterfinger was a little, the center was kind of rough, tough very crunchy. I think they changed the recipe a little bit and now it's perfectly crunchy. Mm. It is a flaky center as opposed to a center 
that you used to be able to, I don't know, break your teeth on. So here's to the Butterfinger. Bye. If you need some clarification on what they need, on what they need. Do over. Because, you know, you've got fabrics that are different widths of fabric. Fabric. 